we've done 10 minutes of maintenance and we're ready to go out there and go again. Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies and today I'd like to do a little tutorial video on Koisho Phaser race preparation or more so what to do in between races. So this isn't really aimed at on race day doing uh, in between races, more when you get home from a race weekend and getting it prepped up or even the day before you go racing, some things to check over, make sure you haven't got any damage and give the car a good service. So this one's done a full club race out at regional Bendigo, it was a fabulous day. And the standard body actually did really well. It's got a few bumps and scratches on it, but that's to be expected. And yeah, really, really happy with that. I'll take the body off, get that out of the way. Okay, so we've got the car. Let me just zoom out here. Okay, so you can see here, I do have a Futaba receiver. I've got the core shape receiver. You can see um, the speed controller, sorry. You can see here, I've got my A and B transponder tucked down there. Um, stock spec motor, nine steps LiPo, and I've got a highest 550 uh, steering servo, metal geared st steering servo, and an Aromax alloy servo horn. Now all that stuff was put on, not really to improve performance in any way, shape or form, just to make the car more reliable and more consistent, and more robust. So added a fair bit of durability there. And of course, putting the Futaba receiver has allowed me to use my Futaba radio gear. So that's really cool. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, so we're going to be doing things like getting the wheels off. I'm going to be checking the shocks, checking some screws. I'm going to clean the motor um, with a really old fashioned, um, what we call water dipping. And that's because we are in fact going to dip the running motor into water just to flush out any dirt. We'll dry it off and then we'll re-oil it and put it back in. So let's get started. So we've come back from race day. We've got the body off. I've got my lipo bag here. Within uh, my batteries from the day. So now you shouldn't keep these fully charged as we all know. We should put these in storage. So I'm gonna go here. First I'm gonna do is check the condition of the battery. I've got a simple little JPRC voltage checker here. And that's gonna show me the condition of the battery. So we're at 99%. So I did put this one away fully charged. So we'll better put that one straight into storage. Likewise, I'm tipping with this one. Yep, we've got one, this one here at 99% needs to go into storage. And the one in the car, I'll actually leave it in there because I'm gonna dip the motor with it. So I'm gonna grab my charger here. I've got my Sky RC uh, D260. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll do it on the overhead. We'll put the batteries into storage. So you would be familiar with hooking your batteries up to this. I mean, you've been charging on this all the time. I have anyway. So plug in the big lead. We can see here I've been charging it at eight amps. So we've got our second channel, channel B. We'll highlight that. And then we'll go through the process storage there we go it's got it all for us well we'll be pushing start two cells enter and away it goes so that's going to be discharging that down to 3.954 volts and that's where i like to keep my batteries in storage in between race meetings this one again put it into storage push OK and I love this little Sky RC charger it is really good really powerful really easy to read in the open the screen um, and it's very robust and packs down really well in your toolbox all right batteries are going into storage let me put those to the sign we'll probably get a really loud beep in a minute so next thing I'm going to do is take the wheels off so I like to do that so we can get access at the rest of the car so I'll go here. Now while I'm doing this, I'm going to be checking the, the tire, make sure that it hasn't come in unglued or torn in any way, shape or form. And that's looking really, really good. Now these are white wheels that I've actually painted to suit the Skyline body a little bit better. Go for that scale look. You can see here I've actually marked it. So I know that this is my second set of tires and this is tire number four so i know when i'm putting it back on the car 
exactly where it fits. Now the way that these ones go, I'm just going to go ahead and do, do that back up to make sure that the, the hex doesn't come off. Got these really scale looking brake calipers here, looks really cool. You can see here I've probably got a stone or something in there at some point. That's fine. Okay, rear tire. And I'm going to do this for all four. Okay, so just getting this last wheel off now. And I can sit the car back onto the car stand. Like so. Got it on here. And like I said, you can see on the overhead, I can see that it's this is tire number three. Everybody's got their own way of marking it. And that's just so I know in relation to the corner of the car where it goes because you do like to know how they're wearing um, and the track you don't just swap them off and put them on willy-nilly to get ultimate performance and longevity out of your tires okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is take my old paintbrush here and give the car a good brush over and just to get rid of any loose materials or debris before we go further in to the, the servicing. Simple as that. Okay, now that's going to ensure, because I'm just about to take my gear case cover off now, and that's going to ensure that I don't actually get any unwanted dirt or debris into my gear set. So start here. We can zoom right in here actually and have a bit better of a look what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do here is actually check my pinion and spur. And I'll be checking it for wear and tear and debris. Now we should notice as well that that should have a thin coating of grease on it. As when I did assemble it, I did use a little bit of lithium grease to help preserve the gear set themselves. Now don't ever be scared to work on your car or take them apart. It's my, my favourite part of RC actually is working on and servicing the cars. Okay, we can get the gear cover off now. Like so and have a look in there. So first thing I'm going to do is tip it upside down and have a look. Now that is really clean which is what I like to see. There's no dirt degree. The, what, the grease I put in there was white and is still very white so there's no metal flakes or shiny parts in there so that is really cool. We can have a look at the spur gear. Now I'll get the motor out like so and I've left enough wire on there on this system that I can actually just put it out to the side and what I like to do now is actually turn the transmission over by hand and now I can feel without the motor being connected whether there's anything tight or there's any resistance in the drivetrain or in fact if I've got a seized bearing it's going to turn okay so you can just in fact turn this one over and I can feel that there's no notchiness there's no stones caught in it anywhere which is great news it's exactly what i was hoping for so i'm not actually going to pull the rest of the gearboxes apart i am however going to pull the pinion off and take the motor case just do this on the overhead i've got it zoomed in so it's a little bit tricky you can see here i've got a steel or alloy pinion gear instead of the factory plastic one and that's that's more than allowed and then i'm going to go ahead and take off the the motor plate with my two and a half mil keeping note of course that the motor position for this pinion is on the d screw marks so i'll be sure to take note of that to make sure that when i put it back in i've got the correct gear mesh okay take this one out there we go I'll sit this one to the side and we've got a little bit of a, a gasket here 
and that what that does and that stops the motor blowing um, dirt and debris into the gear set into your pinion and spur because it does actually have a fan on the motor so and that's to keep it cool but you don't however want to pick up dirt and debris and be blowing it through the motor and into your gear set so I'm really glad to see it's the first time I've had that off I'm really glad to see that it does in fact have a gasket and you want to make sure that you put that back on okay the motor feels really really nice and if I go in one of these side vents here I can actually see the state of the brushes and the commutator of this motor and they are in really good condition and so they should they've only had like six or seven runs so what I'm going to go ahead now is actually dip it into a, a jar or a bucket of water here's one I have prepared earlier I'm just zoom out a little bit now I'm trying not to make a mess which is a lot harder than it seems we'll in fact need another car stand ordinarily I would unsolder it and put it in but in this case I'm just doing a quick little demonstration so you can see here I've actually got the water um, under submerged in water and it's just playing water and that's just going to agitate it and wash all and any crud out of it so I don't like to use any soaps or chemicals and definitely um, no solvents okay so I've got my radio go ahead turn the car on with the motor fully submerged and I'm going to go ahead here and just apply, apply a little bit of throttle I don't want to put water everywhere just like so you can see how it's all agitating And like I said, you don't need it too much. It's just a matter of getting any loose debris out of the motor. There we go. That will do plenty. I'll give it a big rev, get all the water out. And if I have a look here, I know that I'm quite zoomed in. If you have a look here, you can see that the water is no longer clear. And it's actually got quite a lot of dirt and rubbish in it, which is what we want to see, which is really cool. All right. Now it's as simple as just drying off the motor and reinstalling it. I will, in fact, be putting some oil on the bushes as well. So we'll give it a little bit of a wipe over. Again, I've got, can brush it off, make sure there's no oil debris like so give it a wipe over we'll continue to give it a bit of a rev and it sounds nice and smooth and so it should we know it's got no dirt in it okay guys so now it's a matter of putting the motor plate back on and putting the motor back in the car okay so the motor plates back on give it a bit of a final wipe over and we'll go ahead and apply a few drops of motor bearing oil don't have to drown it just a couple of drops like that go ahead and put my pinion gear on got my trusty nine steps one and a half mil driver here I won't 
torque it right up yet because I want to make sure that I get the mesh sitting in the motor 100% Okay, so I can see here that the pinion is in fact really well in line with the motor. I'm just going to go ahead and adjust it ever so slightly. There we go. We can do that one up and get the motor in for final positioning. Like so. Make sure that the motor holder drops all the way in. Now we can tell our gear mesh by just rocking it slightly. And we can tell that we've got that slight amount of play. And that's going to make sure that we have correct gear mesh, the right amount of efficiency, but without being too loose that we are in fact going to cause any damage to the gear set. Just getting my wires here all nice and out of the way want to make sure that they're not rubbing on anything like so okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put a tiny little bit extra grease here back on it so last time I used lithium grease and it's no different to this time I've got this XTR lithium grease here that I'm going to use we're gonna go ahead and put that on in just one a little bit on the gear set any extra will just come off but there's no need to lather it like so and spin it over and see that we've got beautiful mesh go ahead now put our gear cover on and put the screws in the reverse order that we took them out now I usually like to start with the longer screws to make sure that they go in the, the right spots first now, when I'm doing this, I don't pull the screws down all at once. I'll pull them, I'll get it started and wind it in just until the face of the screw seats, but I won't do it up tight until they're all in and I know that what I'm working on, A, has the right size screws in it, and B, that it's actually sitting as it's supposed to. It's not kinked up at one corner or, yeah. So here we go, get this one in. And just doing small steps like this ensures that you're not going to get overwhelmed. Okay, so go ahead here now and tighten them up. I know it's all sitting well. Starting from the middle and work my way out. Like so. And take the opportunity to put a drop in the rear motor bush like so of oil get that nice and lubricated and I'll go ahead now and power it back up and make sure everything's nice and smooth perfect perfect that's about as good as one of these is going to sound okay so we've had the motor out We've um, water dipped it, cleaned the motor essentially, we've re-oiled it, put it back in, we've reset our gear mesh. Now it's time to have a look at some of the ancillary stuff. And by that I mean just checking over the screws. So what the next thing I'll do is, is I'll put the car upside down and we can just leave it on the body posts. And what I'll do is I will just actuate the shock absorbers. And the reason I do that upside down is because all the oil will fill to the the top of the shop effectively and the piston will be at the bottom so you'll be able to feel if there's an air gap or if your shock absorbers have lost oil giving you an inconsistent feeling now this one here is actually really really good so i know that i don't have to service or rebuild the dampers the shocks really cool they're really cool and you can't hear any um like squelching or air noises inside the shocks so I know that they're going to perform really well again really good really underrated shocks on these cars actually now I'm going to go ahead and just go over the other various screws in the car and see what's come loose 
Now these cars are essentially built with self tappers so they do have an aggressive thread on them which doesn't lend themselves to coming loose but still doesn't hurt to check. It's going ahead here over the chassis screws. The suspension takes a lot of knocks so go ahead here just tighten them up because they can work themselves if they've been hit lights check the bottom of the shocks and usually what I'll do is I'll, is I'll undo it half a turn and then just do it up otherwise you could just be over tightening it from the get-go fantastic the bumper I know I accidentally hit a few things so the bumper is going to need checking like I said undo it and then do it up there's no dirt in the bottom I don't need to worry about cleaning out the screw heads got the servo screws here they've probably had a hard time no everything feels really nice and I can tell that because the way that they're actually undoing they're undoing from tight fantastic so we've checked the motor we've got our batteries on storage time to take this battery out now because this one can, can go away and be put on storage got my little battery foam here these nine step packs are really good I'll put that with the other two and we'll put that one on storage again my charger will let me know when it's all done and we are ready to go so we've given everything a really good check over the car's not making any noises um, we've serviced the motor I'm really happy with it it's ready to go um, one last thing I will check is the servo horn because I have put an alloy servo horn on it They can after a few knocks they can work themselves loose again again I'll undo it and then do it and up. perfect the car has held up really well a full day's racing We've done 10 minutes of maintenance and we're ready to go out there and go again I'm Brett from Hearns and thanks for watching this tutorial on a bit of race preparation for Coyote Phaser. Thanks for watching